Veronica. It's nice to meet you. Oh, it's nice to meet you. It's great to be here. Yeah, so introduce yourself to the INFORMS members. Um, all right, so my name is Veronica White. <laughs> uh, I'm a PhD candidate in the Industrial and Systems Engineering Department at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, I'm currently on the job market. Great. Okay. Thanks for coming. Uh, how long have you been an INFORMS member? Uh, since two, 2018. So pretty new. Yeah. And right, pretty pre-COVID, so. Yeah, like my first INFORMS conference was the one right before COVID, so in Seattle. Okay. Seattle, um, yep. Mm -hmm. It was right around the start of my PhD, uh, so I, was, I gave a poster at that one. Yeah. So how did you find being a new member during the COVID stuff? Had you already think you get your footing as a as a member to know what to do when we all went virtual, or how was that yeah, for you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think it definitely helped to have that one year under my belt yeah. before COVID times. It would have been, but I don't know. Everyone was also going through the same yeah. stuff at the same That's true. time, and it was a bit more accessible, I actually would say, during COVID times. Um, everyone was putting their information out there a bit more, sending more emails, yeah. um, making sure it was posted somewhere so people saw it rather than more word of mouth, like right. how a lot of things kind of function at the conference, which yeah. is great in its own way, just right. different. That's true. Um, and I do think people are kind of a little bit more comfortable, especially in this mm -hmm. community, being behind, not this camera, but mm -hmm. your Zoom camera, you yeah. know. So, mm -hmm. good. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so just tell us a little bit about how you got into this field. How did you yeah. choose this as your career path? When I was in high school, I was thinking about doing engineering because I liked math and science. And um, I got a pamphlet in the mail t telling me about industrial engineering okay. and how it was the science of decision making and helps improve processes and, it, you know, you're doing things efficiently and, you know, all the fun buzzwords we like to throw yeah. around. And I was very drawn to right. it. Um, and then uh, during my undergrad, my like I was I got a bit more sold when my IE 101 professor um, said that industrial engineers improve processes to help people. And I was nice. like, that's that's me. And, um, you know, like, I, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and as I kind of kept going, I just really loved the the modeling part of things, like seeing like a, you know, just a system that's like hard to even just describe in words and then actually being able to model it with math and help provide some insights to, you know, decisions that are so complex. Mm -hmm. um, I just love that aspect of it. So that's yeah. what ultimately drew me to uh, operations research area. So it was first mm -hmm. the to help people. Yeah, to help people, and then, and then the mathematical modeling. modeling, and that's like where what I like. That's my that's my jam. Yeah, that's funny because <laughs> my brain doesn't work that way. Then, then it's fascinating. It's okay. um, <laughs> you too. I know. That's why you guys yeah. are doing it. Um, so, do you have advice for any young students that are just starting out on their PhDs or something in the OR field, the IE field? Yeah. So, if you're just getting kind of started and you're not really sure where to start, just follow things that interest you um, and. Yeah, just go to talks, you know, follow people on social media that are talking about things that you care about. Um, and ultimately, uh, that'll make it more rewarding, connecting with people that are doing things that are interesting to you. Right. Um, and also just, you know, be kind to yourself, You're telling yourself you can do it, um, especially since a lot of this stuff is really complicated at first glance. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that repetition and just being able to, um, you know, keep coming back to it, not giving up, you know, pushing through it, like, it, it, and um, just remembering why you like it so much. Yeah. Uh, Did you have moments kind of like that? Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. imposter syndrome, if you haven't looked it up, oh, yes, I, I look it up. <laughs> yeah, you felt that way? Oh, for sure. <laughs> I think most students do, so talk about it as well. You think mm -hmm. you do think most students feel that way? I do. Just because at least it's at some a difficult point. subject or Yeah, I think it's the math and science yeah. and you know, even if you don't struggle in one class, there might be one you eventually struggle in mm -hmm. and then it might, can get you at random times yeah. or maybe it's not the coursework, maybe it's more um, you know, how you do present and like presenting is like the thing that's getting you. Yeah. Um, it's just like there's so many different avenues yeah. um, and outlets and it's, yeah, different different things get different people. Different how did points. you get through that um, for yourself? Talking through it. Yeah. Uh, just realizing you know, you're not the only one. Realizing you're not yeah. the only one, um, especially like with your cohort. If, yeah. If you have one in your PhD program and... Yeah, just talking with other PhD students in other departments too, which you can meet at Informs. Yes. So, <laughs> perfect. And through societies. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on industry versus academic careers? Um, you said you're on the job market. So, have you noticed any trends as you're finishing up and, and on the yeah. job search? Yeah. Um, I would also say, and don't forget about um, government, and okay. don't forget about private research institutes as well. There's okay. more than just That's industry versus. That's all lumped in industry in my brain, but. Yeah, I guess. I, I like that you make that um, distinction. Thank you. Yeah, I think they're a little bit different because in my mind, like working for an industry, working for a company, like you're very much working for like a vision, right? To like help that company do the best at their project, which is great in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But really private research is a bit more, um, uh, 
you're, you're more, a lot of the times um, you're just it, it's more research focused, more and more general, broad insights rather than implementing for a specific company. So, yeah, so there is like they have that they need you to solve. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah. So it is kind of a bit different, and okay. then government just it's a whole different kind of culture. Yeah, so right. you're yeah you're working for a specific department, but um, yeah it's again more broad insights because you're you know covering the whole you know nation right. <laughs> and um, also uh, yeah a bit more applied. Okay. Um, rather than researchy sometimes. So what have you seen when at, in the job search? Have you noticed there's a lot of industry stuff? People, I know there's, I just heard today, there's 100,000 data scientist jobs mm -hmm. somewhere, you know. So have you noticed stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, data analytics, super hot right now. Even <laughs> operations research, super hot. Um, yeah, even the academic job market is yeah. like really hot compared to how it has been in the past. Okay. Um, I mean, it's much smaller compared to the other areas, mm -hmm. but um, I really think, uh, yeah, analytics and data science are really starting to kind of take off and, yeah, um, yeah but Informs as a whole is kind of benefiting from that yeah. in terms of job growth and job True. opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what would your ideal job be? So yeah. I, I hope that my dream job will allow me to do three things. Okay. Um, and, you know, it could look different in a lot of different roles, but... Um, one, like I really hope to be making an impact in my community or society more generally, um, that it's, you know, really getting to the people that need it most. Um, I didn't do all this work just for me to like stare at it and think how cool it is, right? Like I <laughs> actually, I yeah, like to share it, make it yeah, useful. Um, and two, uh, be able to, you know, inspire and engage with like the new um, generation, I guess, of scientists and operations researcher and help, um, yeah, inspire them to kind of take up this field and keep going. Okay. Um, and the third would be <laughs> to, yeah, just to engage with like the general public and make uh, OR more well known because I think yeah. it'll also work really well with two, um, you yeah. know, getting more people into OR, also just communicating it back to the general public. And it also even fits in with um, impact piece because as you kind of, you know, apply things, it kind of spreads around, right, um, in all the different application areas you might be uh, using OR for. Okay. So mm -hmm. you, those three goals. So you're not picking a side. You, oh. You're not, you don't have a... Where you want to land, you want to be a professor, you want to, you're just, you want those th three things to Those happen three and things, and I think you c I could accomplish them in a lot of different roles. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think academic might give me the most flexibility mm -hmm. at the moment um, compared to like some of the other options, but um, yeah, I, the, yeah. It, it's it's pretty pretty flexible. And really, yeah. you can do whatever you, you want that's to true. some extent. You so. can, mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of it. Yeah. So can you talk about your research at the National Institute of Justice? Yeah, I can. It's finally <laughs> starting to get published. So, okay, oh, yeah. Tell yeah, me about it. Apologies if it, it's a little rusty because I haven't really talked about it too much. But, okay. um, yeah, it, it was a great it, – I mean, I'm still kind of working there. So um, it, it's been a great experience um, just getting to work on a, a bunch of different – Things that I had knew nothing about, from you know reentry to society and victims of crime, which I didn't even know that was like a term uh, specifically that people do research in in sociology, yeah. um, and from like crime mapping to forensic science, um, and just kind of really starting to understand like how our criminal justice um, systems like kind of structured, mm -hmm. um, which is you know very fascinating for me as like a systems background yeah. engineer. Um, you know, I've got a bunch of things going on in my head, <laughs> like, oh, I could model it this way. Just kind of open my eyes to um, a lot of different problems that are happening that aren't really getting talked about in our community yeah. um, of uh, ORMS. So um, yeah, I would encourage other people to just kind of like apply for that weird thing yeah. that like is like interesting to you right. that you're not sure if it like, like will work or not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I have a great advisor, and she was luckily like really. She was like, "Yeah, sure. If you get it, we'll figure say, it how out." How did you find out about I that, did, that? I just got an email about it. Um, I had gone to a, and I also had gone to like a different kind of conference, actually in place from of my advisor, and they were kind of talking about um, they have a felt yeah, their graduate fellowship program, um, and anyone can apply to it. It's not yeah, uh, but that's just kind of where I heard about it was that conference, and then. I got follow-up emails about yeah. it because um, I signed up for their listserv. Yeah. So, and I was like, you know, maybe that is something I could do. Um, and yeah, it just kind of kind of yeah. worked out. And so you're very great. susceptible to email marketing, yes. snail mail. You got that, oh, yeah. that pamphlet that led you to <laughs> Yeah, for so. sure. <laughs> you love the buzzword. Yeah, you got to be open to, <laughs> to new things, right? You don't yeah. know what's going to come your way. That's great. And yeah, and it's not planned. I love mm -hmm. that, you know, just kind of happens and yeah and you gotta just kind of listen to yourself I don't know it's worked yeah. so far for me so great <laughs> so you mentioned your first annual meeting was 2019 mm -hmm. as a new member um, 
So this would be your second then, I suppose, right? Second in person. Second in I did person. Go do the two, last two virtual. Virtual, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, what's your favorite part about the annual meeting? I would say just being able to connect with people that do similar research to you um, and like getting to talk to them in person and being like, wow, I'm not the only one that like really cares about <laughs> this thing. You know, and yeah. it's by going to their talks or, you know, just grabbing lunch or something mm -hmm. after with the, after with them. Um, and yeah, just kind of that networking piece and uh, just getting exposed to new and similar ideas like, oh, wow, I never really thought about that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, I love seeing members favorite. geek out over their topic of interest mm -hmm. because it's just so fun. Like you said, to yeah. you find, like, you're my people. I found someone who yeah, exactly. loves the same stuff. Oh, 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 or when you, like, finally meet someone that you've been, like, kind of, like, observing on social media yeah. for a while. Like, yeah. you're like, oh, I want to meet them, but I just don't know them. Or you've only met on, like, yeah. virtually and on person. happened a lot lately. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. when you finally do get a Good. That's them. awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're also a member of several of Inform's communities, right, mm -hmm. including um, JFIG, which is the junior faculty, yep. um, Worms, Women in ORMS, Decision Analysis and Optimization Societies, as well as the University of Wisconsin-Madison student chapter. Yeah. Um, and more. I don't think I even listed them all. <laughs> That's okay. So. <laughs> Those are the main ones. <laughs> um, what do you find so valuable about these groups? It's just another way to connect to different opportunities that are happening, um, get additional insight into people's research um, in those areas. So I would suggest, you know, signing up for areas that are interest to you. So those are things that I care about um, and I want to follow and I want to see what people are talking about. Yeah. You had to choose one, I guess. Um, yeah, I was going to well, say, do you think you give all your time equally to all six or seven oh, groups definitely that not. you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So and if I you could only pick one or two to, to really be engaged with, which ones would you pick? Yeah, um, well, first, your student chapter is a little separate. So okay. if you're not engaged, with your, you should get engaged with your yeah. student chapter if you have one, or okay. maybe start one if you don't yeah. have one at your uh, school. If you can only pick one, I would say probably, especially if you're just starting out as a researcher, probably just picking um, maybe Worms or even the Minority Issues Forum. Mm -hmm. um, they do a lot of stuff. It's very broad. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that connect um, to, to connect to, um, yeah. and you can learn from a lot of different areas if you're yeah. not really sold on a specific one. Um, so yeah, I would probably start with one of the more general. Yeah, they're very welcoming groups mm -hmm. as well. Very welcoming groups. Their receptions are mm -hmm. fun. Yes. <laughs> Great. Um, and you are also a DEI ambassador for 2022, mm -hmm. correct? So can you, congrats on that, by the way. Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about your project and how it's going so far? Yeah, so this is some joint work uh, with m myself, Mary Ogidabin at Penn State University, and Carmen Hazeltine and Liz Garia at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, Liz actually just graduated and is uh, working Great. For financial firm now. So nice. um, our work is really more of a strategic initiative than just okay. like a specific um, project. project. Okay. Um, and we're doing high school outreach and trying to structure, okay, how should Informs do high school outreach in yes. the future? Tell us. Yeah. So as part of that, we, I mean, we had to actually do some high school outreach. So we developed, you know, some programming and um, we really tried to draw from some of the educational literature in terms of, you know, what does like draw people and gauge interest for students and, um, you know, help make them feel more confident in the computational sciences because I think it really does scare off a lot of people, mm -hmm. especially if you know math hasn't always been their friend or they've mm -hmm. gotten some bad feedback in the past. Yeah. Um, so just being able to uh, gain confidence um, and just trying to build it that way. Uh, okay. So we kind of have it, when you do um, an event, um, just starting off with what is OR because no one really knows. Um, so you've, you've already done some of these? Events. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We did one. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we've done one. It was a virtual. We okay. built it off of the Engineering Summers program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Okay. Um, and so we just kind of did a session for them. So it was high school students that were uh, in, looking in at Wisconsin, engineering local. in Wisconsin. Okay. And yeah, I think they were looking yeah, at that school at least. But yeah, it was a diverse group, group of students because we also were interested in diversity, equity, yeah. and inclusion. Right. Um, and specifically, uh, yeah, in the future, you know, actually like trying to specifically engage students, um, BIPOC students of color, or just other underrepresented students in STEM fields is really a great way to try and get more people through the academic pipeline, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, yeah. And they call it a leaky pipeline in yeah. a lot of the literature. Um, so just trying to like help patch that up and get more students. And honestly, the earlier, the better that you can engage people and make them feel confident in something. Um, so they're more, uh, they can more resilient, I guess, to negative feedback later down the line. Yeah. But um, yeah, so earlier in high school, maybe even middle school, yeah. is uh, the real time. Um, and so we did do one of them. Um, we're talking about it at our 
at the DI session yes, tomorrow, but yes. um, you can just practice here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, we did a label propagation algorithm and kind of connected it to how do social media marketers decide who an influencer mm -hmm. should be and who they should pay, right? Um, it's, I don't know if this is actually how it works, but it got them excited. Yeah. And um, yeah, we just tried to make it a simple uh, model and yeah. we surveyed the students uh, before and after and you know, how confident they feel like they could be in yeah. the computational science field and you know, what did they like about it. And it was received really positively for the students that filled out the survey. And um, you could really see that, you know, just engaging in yeah. something like this was felt like something that they could do. That's great. In the future. Are you guys mm -hmm. going to follow those students and see where they end up? Oh, or? no. Yeah, yeah, this isn't a research study. It <laughs> okay. was, it's more of just from because if it was research, it would have to go through a lot more yeah. um, IRB protocols. It's just for more like program management. It's okay. good for you giving a talk okay. or giving so how engagement. Other, for then you can self-monitor how are you doing? Are okay. you actually doing what you intend to? And then um, it would be more broad than any high school could use this event yeah. to mm -hmm. just promote this career. Yeah, path, yeah. and I, I think specifically like we're thinking like you could take out that engagement activity piece that we're calling it like the thing that you do and you can make it personal like what you know about because like I don't know about label propagation Mary's the one that actually like mm -hmm. came up with it and wrote it so she's great for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we um, yeah, and then we actually, uh, and then the last piece of it is, so what is OR, engagement activity, and then, you know, actually ways to engage with uh, informs in um, more oh, broadly cool. and, you know, or what OR in general, yeah. connect them to the academic programs that exist. So mm -hmm. when they're looking for colleges, where can they actually go to school and do yeah. some of this? Um, you know, the Twitter page, uh, I think I actually connected them to this because, um, <laughs> you know, it's a bunch of stories of yeah. like what people do in yeah. OR. Um, so. Yeah, just kind of getting them to some of those resources if they want to learn more. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, and just more, yeah, generally, hopefully, this is something that can be rolled out more strategically or at least more cohesively yeah. um, to individual student chapters in INFORMS okay. um, and maybe have some sort of base programming. Yeah. Yeah, That's we haven't great. quite worked out all the kinks yeah. yet, but just kind of starting to plan a planet and use but yet, like, existing you channels. You need to start somewhere, and I know we've, I've had so many conversations mm -hmm. about we need to promote these careers to high mm -hmm. school or younger. How do we do that? Yeah, we need to and come up with some people sort of have structure. ideas, but no one's implementing anything. So that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of that. like individual events and pro programs, which are great. Yeah, you know, they do great things. They but do. Then yes, they there like, are some. Do they, they do exist. I don't want to take away yeah. from some that are oh, there. Yeah, they're doing some fabulous work. But yeah. it's just like it's more like creating a system that informs can build off of and you know create their own. You know, we do high yeah. school outreach, and yeah. this is how you do it if you want to get involved in yeah. this. Awesome. It's kind of more the idea. Thank you. So no more about annual meeting. Now we're going to talk about the 2022 Informs Conference on Security mm -hmm. in D.C. You attended this. Yeah, I just went to that one for fun, honestly. For fun. Well, I could, so a perk if you get um, external funding. Oh, you, okay. I, it was, I used some of my travel funds for you NIJ, you know, security, yeah, yeah. justice. Yeah, that's really good. It was a good conference. It's smaller, it so you can smaller. really start, you can really network and find people with more uh in things you're interested in more easily. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the talks were things that I cared about. Yeah. Um, it does feel like the conference is still kind of trying to find itself it in some yeah, ways. It's still kind of new. Which I think is a good thing. Um, I mean, I'm not, my research isn't solely focused on security or I might not ever really get into security much, but there are other topics in terms of, you know, maybe that's a place where like criminal justice or justice right. could fit, you know, right. or um, other sort of humanitarian operations that involve government more broadly yeah. um, rather than just security. So what did you get out of that experience? Just by learning new areas or? Uh, yeah, le I mean, learning a little bit more about security. I think it's a great uh, way to get more engaged in government related research mm -hmm. um, since security is so tied with that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, more focused collaborations and yeah. potential networking um, and just a smaller scale. Yeah. You know, then because Informs is just huge and yeah. I'm sure the business and analysis Analytics conference. Yeah, the analytics yeah. conference is probably similar. It's just like a smaller yeah. group of individuals. All right. Well, if we were sitting here a year from now celebrating what a great year it's been for you, what would we be celebrating? A uh, year from now or? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think just just uh, graduating. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's a huge accomplishment. It is, indeed. Um, yeah, and I never really would have uh, thought that I would be a PhD person. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know what a PhD was when I was a kid. Yeah. So. It's really exciting. Do you have any other passions outside of OR and IE? Uh, yeah, I um, 
I sing. Oh, nice. Fun fact, I'm actually a pretty good singer. Okay. I'm not going to sing right now. Uh, you knew I was going to ask. No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm in like a local choir cool. uh, where I am, and I've been singing Christmas music since August now because oh, wow. we're prepping for our okay. Christmas concert. So you haven't publicly been singing it, you're just practicing. Yeah, we're practicing right season. now. Yeah, and yeah, so I've been, yeah, I'm in a choir. I sing all through like college and everything. Nice. So, um, and soprano or alto? I, I'm a alto, but I'm a mezzo voice, so I have sang second okay. soprano. I can kind of go back and forth. I got, I got, I just, ha I'm lucky and have a really big range, but because nice. of the warmth or color of my voice, okay. I'm, I'm an alto usually. Cool. My oldest daughter wants to be on Broadway when she grows mm. up. That is her dream career. So yeah, good luck. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it but was just intimidating. Honestly, I was too intimidated by Broadway, so I was like, yeah, let's try academia. <laughs> You didn't even attempt to make music your career. You oh no! Fun yeah, hobby. it was my my choir teachers were really upset. Oh. I think, or like maybe disappointed because yeah, they could see potential. Do you have any uh, any recordings anywhere online? We I can Google yeah, later. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I'd be interested. Mm -hmm. um, how about any interesting reading? Have you read any good books this year? Yeah, I mean, I mostly just read like academic books, but um, since we're, we've talked a lot about DEI, my favorite DEI book I've read, Black, Brown, and Bruised. Yeah. It's talking about how like BIPOC uh, students aren't represented in STEM and how it actually like stifles like innovation and embedding OR and STEM in like our society. I don't yeah. think they actually call out OR specifically, oh. but I was connecting it that way. Yeah. Um, and you know, it just hits you with tons of facts and good resources, um, and really grounded in like education literature. And it's just a really fascinating read because nice. uh, you can really see like the whole disparities yeah. um, and like why it's kind of the way it like we're not as diverse as we are, yeah. and how that's kind of really shooting us in the foot in yeah. a lot of ways. So. Were there any um, suggestions on how to? Fix yeah. That yes, there are some that? in the book, um, which are great, um, but. You know, not one shoe fits all, right. and you know, so many departments are structured so many different ways, yeah. so you can't get too specific. Um, yeah, of course. But yeah, there's getting a lot more resources, um, especially even in with within the uh, universities themselves. Really, just um, you know, looking to your um, diversity coordinators or your yeah. chairs or committees, uh, yeah. committees. Yeah, and just you know, if you're really interested in how can we make this better, you know, again, making it more system, like reviewing your processes getting student involvement and, um, you know, getting people of color like on committees so yeah. that they can, you know, have a voice and let you know what's kind of going on. Yeah, um, yeah that's probably probably the biggest step is just getting Engagement. people in the room yeah. um, to kind of talk, say why they're not, you know, being successful. When you're not reading and singing, yeah. Are you binge watching anything? Yeah, of course. Wait, what's your I, favorite right yeah. now? Oh, so I just watched <laughs> the season finale of the Rings of Power. Oh, uh, okay. It was, it was pretty good. I'm a, yeah, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan, so okay. it was good. Um, and then for more fun or casual things, I recently came across Superstore, which oh yeah, <laughs> it is really good. It I think is really it's, good. It's hilarious. It's a lot of seasons too. <laughs> yeah, so I'm about like halfway. I kind yeah. of binged it pretty quick. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one. It's good. Something light. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Veronica. Yeah. I appreciate your time thank you. today.